good day to you all. Thank you very much for the invitation to participate and share with you some of my ideas on where the next resources in Europe might be located. I will give you, first of all, a broad overview of the problem, then move on to some selected critical raw materials, some results from current research, some examples, and finalize, I hope, within the allotted time. Now, we all know that raw materials are becoming increasingly important for the competitiveness of Europe's industries, for the innovation and also for the transition to a low carbon and more circular economy. This is clearly exemplified in the raw material scoreboard, a document that has been published in its second version already, first one being in 2016, and this one that I am quoting from, from 2018. Now, EU imports most of the materials it uses rather than mine it uh, them, themselves. It is therefore a net importer of raw materials and which in, since 2002 has had a trade deficit. And uh, Europe still has many resources. Uh, Europe mines more than 42 different metals and minerals, plus ornamental stones, sand gravels and aggregates. So although there is enough significant political will to ensure security supply of raw materials, there is also public opposition to increased mining because of its environmental effects. The European Commission is therefore focusing on collecting information about deposits available in Europe, not necessarily for new mines, but also to expand existing mines and use them more efficiently. And obviously all of these aspects play into the circular economy. Now, if you think that um, recycling might be an answer to not mining minerals, uh, you can rest assured that this is extremely uh, wrong. Now we see from these uh, from these reports and this and this periodic table that is shown here uh, that the recycling of most of the products rich in rich in the CRM is not commercially uh, viable. Uh, and also um, this low, low and volatile CRM prices undermine efforts to improve the European CRM recycling rates, which are always uh, almost close to zero in most cases. Now, this comes from a Sea Waste uh, report uh, that was published uh, in 2021. And if you have a look at the periodic table, uh, you can see uh, by picking on selected uh, metals and elements that the rate of recycling is extremely low. So therefore it is necessary to always mine for new, uh, new metals and new sources of these metals. Now, if we move on to the European uh, picture, we know that the critical raw materials of Europe, uh, we know where they are, uh, we know what they look like and we know how much of it there is this map uh, already made in 2017 which was based on the critical raw materials list of 2017 is a very good example of this and um, uh, you can see from all the dots and all the different types of uh, colors that are shown that we know exactly where the critical raw materials uh, are these this information can also be obtained from uh, platforms like egdi EGDI is a uh, platform that aggregates data from all of the European geological surveys, all the projects that have, that, that have been undertaken and the research carried out in Europe. And obviously this is something that you can uh, play with and do interactive maps by choosing one or more commodities or choosing groups uh, of commodities. Now, you can also go and find out where the critical raw materials are by having a look at the uh, literature and doing a literature research. And in the literature, you find uh, any deposits of critical raw materials uh, from A to Z. And this could be something like Aksudiamas Placer in Turkey to the Phosphic Placer in Sweden. And obviously, the literature contains much, much, much more information that is available for you to have a look and, and also download and read. Now, Europe, um, Europe contains uh, a lot more information in its, um, in its archives of the projects that were funded by the European Commission. And one of these uh, is obviously, uh, aside from the literature, uh, is the, 
the special uh, groups of experts that were created to do um, to do research into these uh, specific uh, types of critical raw materials. In this case, I highlight here the Eurocon, the European Red Earths Competency in Competency Network, which uh, was uh, terminated in 2014. The other, the other area that you can go and fetch critical raw materials or find out from where critical raw materials are, obviously from the uh, projects that were funded uh, previously uh, by the various uh, European programs. And these uh, are obviously uh, separated into uh, several classes, namely mineral intelligence, exploration and production, secondary resources, land use, capacity building, and research coordination, which all uh, focus on the uh, some aspect of the critical raw materials. And obviously as well, uh, have a, a look at the at the expert groups created within the European, geology, uh, European um, the Euro geosources, uh, namely um, the mineral resources expert group. Now, based on some of the current research that is being done, and this I am going to highlight the Geo Era, which is the establishing the, the European Geological Surveys Research Area to deliver a geological service for Europe. Uh, and the main objective of Geo Era is to contribute, first of all, to the optimal use and management of the subsurface. Geo Era started in 2018 with 15 research projects, and they support an integrated and efficient management and more responsible and publicly accepted exploitation and use of the subsurface. Uh, these projects covered the applied geosciences and they address four uh, specific themes, namely geoenergy, groundwater, raw materials, the information platform. Uh, the raw materials uh, side of GeoERA uh, is comprised of four uh, separate uh, projects, namely Eurolithus, which is the European Ornamental Stone Resources Frame, forecasting and assessing Europe's strategic raw material needs, Mind the Sea, which is seabed mineral deposits in European seas, and Mental for EU, which is mineral intelligence for Europe. Now, all these uh, working together as one cohesive machine then provide data that get uh, sent to um, the GeoEuro information platform that you can see uh, highlighted in the slide on the bottom right hand side, which then uh, feeds itself into the um, uh, EGDI uh, data platform that I have spoken about earlier. One of the things that is coming out of, the, um, of these projects, namely Frame, is the fact uh, that we have done some uh, uh, extremely interesting favorability mapping for several types of mineralization uh, in Europe. This is an example of a favorability map done for uh, the lithium mineralization in Europe. And um, this is a statistic application of the areas where we have data to areas where we don't have data. So if you see the reds, the reds are the very high favorability of finding lithium. Those are known, known deposits or known occurrences. And then we move through the color grade uh, into um, the white areas, which are very low. And so you could, uh, you could look at these maps and say that the orange area still holds a high favorability rate for finding uh, new lithium deposits. What's also being done in, in the frame deposits is obviously the battery critical elements, namely uh, lithium, uh, cobalt, and graphite. In this case, I'm only showing an, an, a map of the lithium uh, resources in Europe and um, the, uh, the, the, the database obviously contemplates all the known lithium deposits uh, in the in the in Europe, and one of the things that we that uh, Frame has done uh, based on the um, work carried out to uh, map the critical raw materials um, together with the uh, Mind the Sea project, which was focused on the land on the sea based deposits, while Frame was focused on the land land deposits, is obviously a joint map of the sea and land deposits. In this case, the example that I'm showing you is of the European cobalt mineralization. And you can see that maps like this make 
all the more sense to use because we should be looking at the resources in the sea as well, not only not only in the land. Obviously, work like this has gone uh, is uh, is appreciated uh, by the European Commission and has gone into reports like the EU Blue Economy Report of 2021 that is uh, shown on the slide. Now, all this is extremely utopic and utopia has a price. So everything is well known, everything is, is, is all under, understood, but we have a dark side to the side to the minerals, uh, to the mineral extraction industry. And these are problems related to the populations that live around the areas that um, uh, where mining is likely to exist. And this is just an example from the Portuguese uh, lithium uh, mining project that has been uh, almost scrapped uh, because of pressure from the, from the population. Then there are arguments against um, uh, other forms of energies and those are, as you can see from this cartoon, nuclear oil, coal, and obviously the very big problem of it's in my backyard problem. So NIMBY plays a very important part uh, in the uh, opposition to new mines. And this is something that uh, we can only, that we can only uh, really uh, do and do away with by, uh, with lots of education programs. So perhaps the best way to find uh, new critical raw materials in Europe and perhaps elsewhere is to first unlock the minds of the protesters so that scenes like this uh, are not commonplace um, on, in, on, a, on our roads. And we, instead of having scenes like this of fighting for the mineral resources that we, that we so drastically need, we end up with pictures like this, operating mines producing producing energy, producing uh, jobs for, uh, for populations uh, in, an, in areas. And with this, I finish my presentation by thanking you for your attention. Thank you very much.